Coming to signs of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Kazi Moses the first. Living Pharaoh, that which you shall be when you awaken to consciousness. Today I'm back with uh, Black Peace Stone Nation member Speaks Out. And this is going to be chapter 10. And in this chapter, I'm going to teach you a few lessons and I'm going to clear up some things. Okay? In my first video, I called a lot of the brothers replicas. A lot of the brothers was offended by that. Felt they was being disrespected and put down. But I'm going to break it down to you and give you a better understanding. The Chief Malik taught us that many are called, but few are chosen. When you somebody that's called, you're a replica. You understand me? You ain't the real deal. You're on the outside looking in. You ain't studying your lessons. You're looking at this shit as if it's some type of game or something. You see what I'm saying? Basically, you want to see consciousness, but you're not going all the way in. You're on the surface just scratching it. You understand me? And that's what makes you a replica, okay? Now, when it comes to this world of men, it's two types of people. It's those who get called a name, and they become that name. And it's others who get called a name, and they say, hey, I ain't no fucking replica. I'm the real deal. And they prove they the real deal by stepping up and being what the fuck they supposed to be. You understand me? And that's what my first video was trying to break down to you, brothers. If you had enough knowledge and wisdom in your heart to step up and be what you're supposed to be. If you got offended by that, then you somebody who want to stay a replica and stay somebody that's called. You understand me? Now, in this nation, well, we have a lot of wisdom. We demonstrate 306 degrees of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's what the chief taught us to seek out. You understand me? And that's what makes you a real stone when you get on that level. And once you get on that level and you get strong in that level, then you're able to uplift people. You are, you're able to uplift your family and all the people you encounter in all walks of life. Wherever you go, whether it's the grocery store, whether it's your job at work, wherever. When people are around a real stone, they will be uplifted because all they're getting is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's all they're going to get out of you. You understand me? And that's what being a real stone is about. A real stone makes this world a better place. We ain't nobody out here on the street corner uh, doing white boy drugs, you know, fucking up our third eye, being a retard. That ain't what Blackstone all about. Blackstone is about being upright, independent, and fearless, taking your rightful place in this world, being a part of this world to make this world a better place. And this is what the chief taught us, and this is the example that the chief set for us. You understand me? So that's the difference of being a replica and a real stone. So if you got offended by that first video where I called these guys out here faking it replicas, then you want to stay a replica and you about being a fake and not being the real deal. But if you didn't get offended, then you made the proper changes. Now, I know I've been gone for a while. I've been going through a lot of stuff. A lot of people been came into my life to try to keep me down and to try to stop me from doing my work in the upliftment of the fall of humanity. But I'm back now and I'm here to make this happen and I'm here to share these lessons with you and teach you to reach a higher state of consciousness, to be on another level, to awaken yourselves and everyone around you. So today I'm going to share a, a lesson with you from the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America. You understand me? And I'm going to break down uh, some nice lessons that's going to give you some food for thought and it, hopefully it will motivate you. Hopefully it will motivate you to want to better yourself and be a better person and to not be doing what these rappers telling you to do and all these people out here that don't know no better. You got to remember, we the leaders, we the trendsetters. People follow and emulate us. We don't follow and emulate them. We don't care if they're rapper or nothing. There's a lot of rappers out here trying to represent this stone thing, but they don't know what the hell they're doing. And ain't nobody trying to get the chief out. Y'all making all this money. You're talking about Blackstone, acting like y'all on this level. But who trying to get the chief out? The chief should have been home before Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover got worse scenario than Chief Mali. But you got all these people pushing to get Larry Hoover out. But ain't nobody pushing to get the chief out. 
our angel, our prophet, the honorable chief Mali. You understand me? That's who we need to be trying to get out. And that's who can come home quicker than anybody. You understand me? And that's who deserves to come home quicker than anybody. It's time to get on that level to be on the right path instead of the wrong path. We ain't got no business doing no white boy drugs. You understand me? That ain't what we about. We don't do Molly. We don't pop X. We don't do fentanyl. We don't do none of that. That's stupidity. You understand? We're on a higher level than that. If you're out there doing that, then you're a replica. You ain't the real deal. You understand me? Wake up, my brothers. Wake up, my people. Now, let me get to the lessons. Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America. All of us should have this. You know what I'm saying? This is what, this is the foundation. This is what really uh, turns you into a scientist. You understand? This is the age of Aquarius. This is where we're going to wake up, where science and religion going to become one. And, and the whole world is going to change for the better. And it's up to us to lead the path. We hold the keys leading the path. We hold the keys of love, truth, peace, and justice. We keep it alive. Us in the Morris Science Temple of America. You understand me? We keep love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice alive. And it's time to wake up humanity and put love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice in the forefront of man and let it be our guiding principles. You understand me? Now, oh, another thing. Also, have your one-on-ones and also your Moorish literature. Them three is a very valuable demonstration that the Holy Prophet Noble Drew Ali laid down. You understand me? Now, I want everybody to be focused on chapter 26, the holy instructions of unity. You understand me? And we're gonna teach, we're gonna break down this uh, chapter and we're gonna hope you get a better understanding, you know what I'm saying, as far as yourself and your personal self goes and it aids you and assists you in the study of your higher self and your lower self and in knowing the difference. You understand me? Now, verse one. The gifts of understanding are the treasures of Allah, and he appointed to everyone his portion in what measure seemeth good unto himself. Now, first of all, the gifts of understanding are the treasures of Allah, okay? Now, we know Allah is the father of the universe. That's what we was taught. So we know when the prophet said Allah, he meant the father of the universe. You understand me? Now, the gifts of understanding are the treasures of the father of the universe, okay? So in other words, if you want true, real treasure in your life, it ain't jewelry, money, gold, or wealth. It's the gift of understanding. It's being able to understand things properly in a way that could better your life. That's a treasure, you understand me? Not how many chicks you got, how much money you got, jewelry, none of that, none of that, that ain't treasure. Real treasure is the gifts of understanding. And that's what was broken down in the, at the beginning of the Holy Instructions of Unity, chapter 26. Okay, and he appointed to everyone his portion in what measure seemeth good unto himself. In other words, the Father of the universe appointed everyone his portion in what measure seemeth good unto himself. So everyone has a portion of understanding as far as what seemed good to himself. You understand me? But the thing is, you have to remember, if you are third, you demonstrating white boy drugs, the things that you think seem good to yourself ain't going to be what's really good to yourself because the mind is clouded and off its square. You're not in your proper state of thinking. You understand me? You're in your lower self. You understand me? Wake up, my brothers and sisters. Verse 2. Had he endowed thee with wisdom, had he enlightened thy mind with the knowledge of truth, communicated to the ignorant, for their instruction, communicated to the wise for thy own improvement. So in other words, ask yourself, had he endowed thee with wisdom? Had he enlightened thy mind with the knowledge of truth? Do you really have wisdom, my brothers and sisters? Have your mind been enlightened with the knowledge of truth? Or are you cloudy and off your square? Ask yourself. And if you do have it, communicate it to the ignorant for their instruction. It's your duty and obligation to communicate it to the ignorant and help them and assist them, raise them to a higher vibration. You understand me? And it is also your duty to communicate it to the wise for your own improvement. So if you know people that's wise and already on the path and you see them shining, you see the light around them, demonstrate with them. Talk with them. 
improve yourself more by associating yourself with people on that path. People who are about bettering their self and living in the signs of the higher self and staying away from the lower self. Number three, true wisdom is less presuming than folly. The wise man doubted often and changes his mind. The fool is obstinate and doubted not. He knew the whole things, but his own ignorance. You understand me? Now, the prophet, Noble Drew Ali, had a vocabulary that was uh, very powerful and beyond his time. And that's why we study these lessons in this age after he's long gone. Because his message was prepared and focused more on the future of mankind and not the past. So when you read this Circle 7 Quran and you run across these words that you don't know, it's best to have your dictionary ready so that you can look up these words. Okay? Now, when it says true wisdom is less presuming than folly, folly is a lack of good sense. Okay? So true wisdom is less attractive than folly, lack of good sense. Being having a lack of good sense is a lot of fun. Okay? So it's not going to be as attractive as being stupid. You understand what I'm saying? But we know we're not here to be stupid. We're here to be scientists. We're here to wake up. We're here to improve ourselves. Okay? Now, the wise man doubted often and changes his mind. A wise man is always looking for improvement of, of himself. So he's going to doubt himself, even when others don't doubt him, just to see if he can come up with something better or find a revelation from the Father so that he can learn more and awaken himself more. So he's going to doubt things that he does, and it's only for his own improvement. You understand me? And he's going to change his mind sometimes, too, because he knows he doesn't know everything. A wise man is not stupid. He's not in this world to be smart. He's in this world to be intelligent. He's a scientist. This is a journey to him, an experience, a discovery, a self-discovery. And this self is the higher self. You understand me? Now, it says, the fool is obstinate and doubted not. He knoweth all things but his own ignorance. So I looked up the word obstinate. And obstinate means stubbornly refusing to change one's opinion or chosen course of action despite attempts to persuade one to do so. So the fool is stubborn. He's hard here. You try to tell the fool, right, he don't want to hear it. He think that the, what he know, you know what I'm saying, is truth because it's been working for him. And because he's been getting by knowing these minute things, he's going to stick to it and forget anything he hears that's better. And that's not the right way to be. Life is about growth. We were taught that we were seeds, and seeds are here to grow. We come through these bodies, we demonstrate the 666, six, six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, the carbon body, because without a foe, we never know our strength. So we use this body to grow, okay? And that's what life is about. We need this foe here to fight it, to overcome it, so that we can grow. But the fool is content with it, and he don't care as long as he's able to get by. And it says he knoweth all things but his own ignorance. You done met people where you're trying to tell them they're wrong and they don't want to hear it? All they want to hold on to is the little pebbles that they do know and try to, uh, you know, act like that's something when it ain't nothing. All right, we're going to move on to four. The pride of emptiness is an abomination, and to talk much is the foolishness of folly. Nevertheless, it is the part of wisdom to hear with patience their impertinence and to pity their absurdity. All right. So, the pride of emptiness is an abomination. I looked up the word abomination. Abomination is a thing that causes disgust or hatred, okay? The lower self, all right? For you to think that the little things that you do know and, and think that that's something and feel like it puts you on a pedestal above others, that's an abomination. It causes disgust or hatred. It causes disgust or hatred to yourself and to the people around you because here you are trying to throw around something that ain't nothing and act like it's something. You understand me? And to talk much is the foolishness of folly. You run into people sometimes, man, where you talk in a conversation with them and they doing all the talking. You try to tell them something and they over talking you while you trying to talk to them. And that there is the foolishness of folly. Always listen and hear a person out. When you're in a conversation with somebody, let them talk. Let them express themselves. Don't always try to over-talk them and act like you know everything. You have to learn to 
hear them with patience and permanence. And if they still talking folly and trash, still listen to them, but pity their absurdity. And I looked up that word absurdity. That means the quality or state of being ridiculous or wildly unreasonable. You're going to run into people that's ridiculous and wildly unreasonable. Still hear them out for your own personal growth. Don't shut them off. Don't disrespect them. Still hear them out. And when they do talking, and you talk politely with them and break down the things that you know. But still hear them out because you might be surprised. This might be a fool, but it might be one little thing you do know that might teach you a lesson. So always hear that person out. All right, verse 5. Yet be not puffed up in thine own conceit, neither boast of superior understanding. The clearest human knowledge is but blindness and folly. Okay, the prophet Nubadru Ali taught us that a finite mind cannot comprehend things infinite, okay? And when you're in this flesh, your mind is finite, okay? The spirit mind is infinite, but this physical mind is finite. And finite means that it has limits. Infinite has no limits. You understand me? So, be not puffed up in your own conceit. Conceit is another word I looked up. That's excessive pride in oneself. Don't have excessive pride in oneself. Some pride is good, but not too much. Okay? Some things you have to have pride for because you have to stand for something like love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, and have pride in the fact that you follow that. But to have pride in because you got a chick with a fat ass or because you got this money and all that, that's nothing to be prideful about because those are the things that will pass away. You understand me? So be not puffed up in our own conceit. Don't act superior. Don't act like because you didn't learn these lessons and a lot of them that you got superior understanding. Because the clearest human knowledge is but blindness and folly. And folly is lack of good sense. Because a finite mind cannot comprehend things infinite. Remember, we're in a stage of growth. So there's always more to learn. You understand me? Now we're going to go to six. The wise man filleth his imperfection and he's humble. He laboreth in vain for his own approbation. But the fool peepeth in the shallow stream of his own mind and is pleased with the pebbles which he seeth at the bottom. He bringeth them up and showeth them his pearls. And with the applause of his brethren, he delighted himself. So, the wise man feels his imperfections. In other words, the wise man knows he's not perfect. No matter how much knowledge the wise man has, he knows he's not perfect. So he's humble. Because he does know there's other things that he can learn. And there is other people out here who can teach him something. Okay? No matter how much knowledge he has, he must be he must stay humble. Okay? It says he labored in vain for his own approbation. Okay? So I looked up that word uh, vain. It was two definitions for vain. One is the ability having or showing an excessive, having or showing an excessively high opinion of one's appearance, abilities, or worth, okay? And the second definition is producing no results, useless, okay? So what I get from when the prophets say he labored in vain for his own approbation, oh, let me go back to approbation. I looked up approbation. Approbation means approval or praise. So when the prophets say he labored in vain for his own approbation, I'm going off the second definition where it says produce no results, okay? So, the wise man produces no results in his own approval or praise because to approve and praise a little finite knowledge that he does know is nothing to him because he knows that this life is a never-ending journey of studying oneself. Uh, the prophet taught us to study ourselves, and when you ask him what to study next, he replied yourself. So, yourself is a never-ending process of studying. So, you can never get big results in the approval and praise of yourself when you know you still study. As long as you're living, you're studying. So there's no reason to be puffed up, think you're better than people, and things of that nature. Now, back to the food. It says the food peepeth in the shadow stream. Shadow stream, okay? What the food think he knows is nothing. But because he know it and he's able to do these little tricks, you know, and get people's approval and make people say, man, I didn't know that, all, all that. You know what I'm saying? That's a waste of time. You understand? So, it says, The fool peepeth in the shallow stream of his own mind and is pleased with the pebbles which he sees at the bottom. He bringeth them up and showed them his pearls 
And with the plava of his brethren, he delighted himself. So the fool can do his little tricks, make people think he's awesome, make people think he's on something, you know. And uh, he's pleased with that. He don't want to learn nothing else because he's getting by doing what he's doing. He thinks this is something. But there's others that will come around and see what he's doing, and they'll know that that's nothing. You understand me? And those people the fool will despise. Instead of trying to learn from those people, he's going to reject their teachings and hold on to the little pebbles and the shallow stream that's in his own mind and play like that's something great when actually it's nothing. Because once you think you're smart, you're the dumbest person on the planet. You understand me? It's good to be intelligent, but don't ever think you're smart. Because once you think you're smart, then you can't learn nothing else because you're pleased with the pebbles and the shallow stream of your own mind. The little things that you do know you think it's something because you can memorize people that's on a different level, a level of understanding that's not as high as yours, and you think you're doing something great when in all actuality you ain't doing nothing. It's always more to learn. You understand me? And that's the difference between the fool and the wise man. Okay? Now we go to seven. He boasts of attainments and things that are of no worth, but where it is a shame to be ignorant, there he had no understanding. So, the fool is going to show off all the little things he knows and really it ain't nothing because it's only things that's dealing with this world and a physical life. When there's things greater to learn, things way more beyond that person's understanding out there. And um, where it is a shame to be ignorant to that, there he had no understanding. It speaks for itself. We're going to go to eight. Even in the path of wisdom, he toils after folly, and shame and disappointment is the reward of his labor. Now, we got people out here, man, where you try to come to them and bring them love, truth, peace, and justice, and teach them a higher way of thinking, and because they're on this finite crap, because they're able to get people to follow them and chase after their little finite wisdom, you know what I'm saying? They're not going to listen to a thing you got to say. They ain't going to listen to nothing. And shame and disappointment is a reward of their labor. There's so many people out here, they done predicted the end of the world. They done told people that the world going to end on this day, and it ain't never happened. You understand me? A lot of Christians done done this year after year, and it don't happen. And shame and disappointment is a reward of their labor. You understand me? That's a fool. Thinking they know something when they don't know nothing. Not humble. Too prideful. This is what the prophet was breaking down. He was letting you know. You understand me? The right, the message is right here. It's pure. All you got to do is use your 360. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And you'll see right there. Now, we're going to move on to nine. Back to the wise man. But the wise man cultivates his mind with knowledge. The improvement of the arts is his delight, and their utility to the public chronic with honor. See, a wise man is constantly studying. Even while the wise man is teaching, the wise man is studying and trying to improve himself. And the improvement of the arts is his delight. The wise man gets delight out of studying and learning his lessons and applying them to himself and being a better person. And when he uses it on the public and helps them, Crowns him with honor. Verse 10, the last one. Never they are, never the le nevertheless, the attainment of virtue he accounted as the highest learning, and the science of happiness is the study of his life. So, I looked up virtue. Virtue is behavior showing high moral standards. Okay? Open up the door for your brother man. Help your brother man out. You see somebody that's hurting, you know, in a situation, help them. You understand me? That's being virtuous. You know, studying yourself, knowing the difference between your higher self, fighting the lower self, learning to walk in the higher self. That's the highest learning. And the science of happiness is the study of his life, okay? All right, we looked up the word science. Science, the intellectual... And one of the definitions of science, not all of them, but this is the one I'm, I'm, I'm 
from my understanding, I see that the prophet was talking about. The intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Okay? We scientists. We study everything. We study the people around us, our interactions with those people, how we behave. Did we let them provoke us to anger? Did we stay on our square and not feed off into the lunacy around us? Things of that nature, okay? That's the science of happiness, okay? It's the study of th this life. That's the science of happiness, okay? Now, that I will end on this note and let you know that my brothers and sisters, we must learn to be scientists. We must learn to study ourselves and apply it to ourselves, okay? and teach others and be the living example of others. That's what this is all about. That's what life is all about. Science and religion is one. We are active, not passive. You understand me? It's time to be active, not passive, okay? Get your Holy Quran of the More Science Temple of America. Get your 101s. Get your Moorish literature. These are must-haves if you will choose to be a scientist. If you want to be on the path to make you upright, independent, and fearless. If you want to use this lifetime on what the purpose of it is. If you want to grow. You understand me? It's a saying I learned a long time ago, okay? And this saying was, small minds discuss people. Mediocre minds discuss events. Great minds discuss ideas. So once I learned this, I always strive to discuss ideas more than anything. It's true, we're going to discuss people sometimes, we're going to discuss events, but you want to develop a mind and become a type of person that discusses ideas more than anything. That is a great mind. You understand me? Ask yourself, are you small-minded? Is your whole conversation all day, every day, discussing people and what they're doing, who who got a, the boob job, who got the breast job, uh, who got the good shit, the drugs, so you can fuck your third half even more? Do you have a mediocre mind when you're discussing events, the latest boxing match, the basketball match, what happened on football, all of that? Or do you have a great mind that's always coming up with an idea that can help you be more industrious and more able to study life and study your higher self and your lower self and break away from the grip of the lower self and walk in the signs of the higher self and become immutable. What path are you on? Ask yourself, are you small-minded, mediocre-minded, or are you great-minded? You understand me? Now, with that thought, I'm about ready to end this. So if you got something out of this and you got something fruitful out of this, make sure you like this video and subscribe. Watch all my other videos, learn from it, tell your friends about it, your buddies, everybody, and grow. Life is about growth, okay? The higher self is one with the father of the universe. It's in us. The human body is the temple of the creator. When you walk in the higher self, and you know the difference from the higher self and the lower self. You understand me? And please help me out. I got books out here. Books that's going to teach you many lessons, okay? I, the, the, the poetry in here is short. It rhymes like rap. You can learn many lessons from it. I got the Poetry of Self-Realization. I got the Poetry of Self-Realization Volume 2, Real Hip Hop. And last but not least, I am the Poetry of Self-Realization, Volume 3, Young and Dumb. Let's get these books. Help me out. Assist me. You know, we stones. We're supposed to stick together. You know, we're here to teach the world. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but I ain't got no help. Help me. Go get my book. Donate to the cause. You're going to learn something from it. It's not like I'm selling bullshit. I'm selling you truth. I'm on the right path of love, truth, peace, freedom, justice. Assist me. Like this. 
subscribe, tell everybody you know, let's get motion in progress. And let's work on uplifting ourselves and uplifting fallen humanity. With that thought, I leave as I came. In the signs of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, all is truly well.